Good afternoon from the Argos headquarters in London. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Ivan Menezes, Chief Executive of the Argo, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to our 2021 Capital Markets Day. As the world around us is changing at pace, we continually strive to be one of the best performing, most trusted and respected consumer products companies in the world. This ambition is firmly embedded across our business. From the results of our employee survey, 84% of responding employees can see a link between their work and the Argeo's immediate priorities and performance ambition. And I am proud of the progress we have made against this ambition since we met two years ago. We've demonstrated resilience and agility in the face of extensive volatility, and we have emerged stronger. In fiscal 21, we delivered organic net sales ahead of fiscal 19 pre-pandemic levels by over 6% on a constant basis. We have upweighted marketing, acquired 12 brands, and continue to invest in future growth. We've launched Society 2030, the next phase of our 10-year sustainability action plan. We've delivered strong cash performance demonstrating the everyday efficiency focus that's embedded into our business rhythm. We've increased our full year dividend per share for the 20th consecutive year, in spite of the pandemic. And we commenced a return of capital program of up to four and a half billion pounds to be completed by the end of fiscal 2024, of which about a third has been completed by way of share buybacks to date. And as we will demonstrate throughout today, I believe the best is yet to come. Our executive team are a winning combination of homegrown talent who've held various roles across the RGO markets and new joiners who bring valuable outside perspective and a wealth of expertise. My world-class team of colleagues and I will discuss how the RGO's core capabilities and unique purpose-driven culture are sources of competitive advantage, enabling us to deliver long-term sustainable growth. Christina, Deborah, Alvaro, and Sam will showcase how we are marrying outstanding creative flair and leading edge analytics to nurture and build exceptional brands. Ewan and John O'Keefe will demonstrate how our supply chain is a key driver of our competitive advantage, even in the most challenging market conditions. Mairead, Hina, and John Kennedy will bring to life how our people's passion for our purpose is driving performance, as well as an ownership mentality. And finally, Lavanya will discuss our sustainable growth algorithm, including our new, higher, medium-term guidance and we will have several Q&A sessions through the day. As we progress through today's agenda, there are six takeaways to keep in mind. The Argeo is the number one international spirits player, and spirits is rapidly premiumizing and gaining value share of global total beverage alcohol. The Argeo has an advantage portfolio with extraordinary brands across price segments, categories, and geographies. The Argeo actively shapes its portfolio towards higher growth opportunities and builds highly successful brands. The Argeo has leading market positions with exposure to significant current and future growth opportunities. The Argeo is building on its strong track record of ESG in pioneering grain-to-glass sustainability with a 10-year action plan, Society 2030 Spirit of Progress. And the Argeo's people are passionate about its brands and their engagement with its purpose creates an ownership mentality fueling better execution. The growth in the total beverage alcohol market is underpinned by strong consumer fundamentals in both developed and emerging markets. The first is population with an additional 550 million consumers coming of age this decade. 
The relentless rise of the middle class continues, enabling a further 700 million consumers to access our brands. In India alone, we anticipate 100 million new potential consumers in the next five years. The second is penetration. Across the world, our iconic global giants recruit over 40 million new consumers each year to our brands. Even in our largest market, the United States, there is still significant headroom as only 50% of households purchase spirits every year. The pandemic disrupted consumer behaviors, creating an exciting opportunity for spirits with a significant rise in the at-home cocktail occasion. The third is premiumization. Purchasing power has remained resilient, with the premium end of household staples continuing to gain share as consumers look for affordable luxuries. And total basket size for consumers who purchase spirits is considerably higher than for those who just purchase beer. The Google searches for premium spirits has increased tenfold in the last decade, reflecting consumers' desire to trade up to drink less but better. Let me start with why I believe the Ajo has a long runway for exciting growth ahead of us. Firstly, total beverage alcohol, or TBA, remains a very attractive market. It is large and growing, and we are focused on increasing our market share. Diageo is already the leading international spirits player by retail sales value, 1.5 times the size of our nearest competitor. But it is the TBA market that represents our overall consumer opportunity. Given that we hold only about a 4% value share of global TBA, we have significant headroom for long-term sustainable growth. Our ambition is to deploy our superior capabilities to outperform the market and deliver a 50% increase in the Agio's TBA share by 2030. I'm confident in our ability to achieve this ambition. Since our last Capital Markets Day, we've continued to build the Agio into a stronger and more agile business. We are more consumer-centric than ever before with a stronger advantaged route to consumer. This means we see changing consumer trends and economic conditions more quickly. We're getting better, more timely and insightful data, enabling us to make faster, smarter decisions. All of which allows us to better anticipate and respond to marketplace changes. Over the past decade, the TBA market grew at 3.4% compound annual growth, with total spirits growing materially faster at 6.1% CAGR, gaining 9 percentage points of total TBA share. Within spirits, premiumization or trading up is a long-established trend, with the total premium plus spirit segment growing at double digits annually for the past decade. Going forward, we expect spirits to continue to win share from beer and wine and for the premiumization trends to continue, driven by the favorable consumer fundamentals I touched on earlier. Christina will bring these to life in her presentation. In addition to being the largest international spirits player, we have the largest premium plus business. Premium Plus brands are those retailing at over $25 a liter, and so includes brands like Johnny Walker, Black Label, and above. On a standalone basis, our Premium Plus retail sales value is larger than the total retail sales value of each of our spirit spheres, with the exception of just one competitor. Since fiscal 15, our Premium Plus spirits portfolio net sales value, or NSV, has grown at a rate that is significantly higher than the Diageo average. Innovation has contributed to this growth of our premium portfolio, and Christina will discuss our capabilities in this exciting area later this afternoon. And this dynamic and highly profitable business now drives over half our total NSV. In addition, we are the only international spirits player to compete in the large 
growing and rapidly premiumizing Baiju market with our majority stake in Shuijingfang in China. We expect the rapidly growing categories of agave, gin, international whiskey, and scotch to drive international spirits retail sales value growth over the next five years. Let me tell you about our exciting positions in these categories. Tequila is a dynamic and exciting category, which we expect to continue to grow rapidly. As Deborah will bring to life later, tequila is delivering on key consumer and cultural trends with its authentic blend of tradition and craft. We used our deep consumer insights to prepare for the category takeoff and built a powerful portfolio of brands, which are rapidly gaining share. In 2015, we just had a sixth share of the global tequila category. Since then, we've tripled our market share, driving over 30% of total category growth. In the United States, we're expecting the tequila category to deliver over 50% of incremental spirits growth in the market over the next five years supported by the rapid premiumization of this category. We are very excited about the future of our portfolio in this category, which you will hear more of today. We are the number one global gin company, over twice the scale of our nearest competitor, with a strong portfolio that's driving category growth. At our last Capital Markets Day, Christina highlighted Gordon's as an example of what great creativity can do for a brand. A few years prior to that, Gordon's was at risk of losing relevance and its leadership position. We showed you how through our radical brand intervention and by getting the fundamentals and creative right, it's possible to reignite growth. Today, Gordon's continues as the world's leading gin. In the past five years, Gordon's has driven almost 40% of total retail sales growth in the standard price point, recruiting new consumers into this dynamic category. Gin is rapidly premiumizing, with premium plus price points growing at almost 20% CAGR over the past five years. We have fueled this growth, gaining five percentage points of share, with Tanqueray growing strongly. Crown Royal, our iconic brand, has driven over 50% of the growth of the total Canadian whiskey category over the past five years, increasing its share to almost 40%. With strong performance of flavors such as Crown Royal Apple, it is also expanding into the explosively growing premium ready-to-drink market in the US. Scotch is forecast to grow at 7% CAGR, supported by strong premiumization trends. And we expect it to contribute at least 15% of total international spirits RSV growth over the next five years. We have the world's leading Scotch portfolio with a 35% total share of RSV, over 1.7 times the scale of our nearest competitor. Our flagship Scotch brand, Johnny Walker, is three times the size of its nearest competitor. And our premium plus Scotch portfolio now drives almost 70% of our total Scotch NSV. Many of our iconic brands have been built over decades or even centuries. While never losing sight of the importance of investing in the growth of these great brands, we use our insights to identify acquisition opportunities in fast-growing segments, both through outright acquisitions, as well as taking smaller stakes through our Diageo-backed incubator, Distill Ventures. Examples include Don Julio and Casamigos acquired to capture the fastest-growing segment in our largest market, tequila in the US, Aviation American Gin and the Chase Distillery to broaden our portfolio in the fast-growing premium gin occasion, Lone River Ranch Water and Loyal Nine Cocktails to support our ambition in the rapidly growing ready-to-drink category in the US, and Seedlip to meet consumer demand for sophisticated non-alcoholic options. 
we have active portfolio management discipline and dispose of assets that offer less attractive growth potential. For example, a strategic review of the Ajo India's popular brands is currently underway to potentially streamline the domestic IMFL portfolio in pursuit of quality, sustainable growth. Through the acquisition of premium plus brands in fast growing categories alongside strategic disposals, we have actively strengthened our portfolio and geographic footprint. Since acquiring Don Julio and Casamigos, we've applied our core capabilities, the best brand building expertise, which combines consumer insights with marketing creativity and flair, and then brought strong execution to accelerate the performance of these brands. They are the only two tequila brands in the top five to have gained market share over the past five years, as we enhanced consumer awareness of their strong premium cues, craftsmanship, and authenticity. Since acquiring Don Julio, we have increased its NSV sevenfold and Casamigos 11-fold. Tequila has recently seen accelerating growth in the US, and so we believe our tequila portfolio has significant runway ahead. You will hear more of this later. Diageo is the number one spirits company in North America and is gaining share. This important region contributes 40% to Diageo's net sales value and over half of its operating profit. However, with only a 7% value share of TBA, we have a long runway for growth in key growth categories such as tequila and whiskey. The Agio is the number one international spirits company in Europe with a strong position in the fastest growing premium plus segment. I'm particularly pleased that momentum in the on trade continues to build as consumers reemerge from the pandemic. John will discuss how Guinness is at the heart of the conversation about recovery and the reopening in Ireland. And the off-trade remains robust in the region. Greater China is the biggest TBA market in the world, and we expect it to continue growing strongly over the next five years. And we have a clear ambition to be over 10% of the Ajo's net sales over time. I'm particularly excited that we're building our first whiskey distillery in China, which will be in the environmentally stunning Yunnan province. It will produce a new super deluxe Chinese origin single malt whiskey. It will also feature an immersive and interactive visitor center, bringing whiskey to life for an even greater audience for generations to come. You'll hear more about this from Sam Fisher later. We are playing the long game in India, where by 2030, McKinsey estimates the country will have the third largest number of higher income households globally. A trend that is driving strong growth in the premium and above categories. The Ajo is the number one player in international spirits in India and number one in the exciting premium plus segment, which is forecast to grow at twice the market forecast rate. We believe Africa will be another long-term engine for NSV growth, supported by highly favorable demographics. In this dynamic region, we have a wide portfolio of brands across beer, spirits, and non-alcoholic categories in over 30 markets at multiple price points. John O'Keefe will tell you more about Africa later. And in Latin America and the Caribbean, Diageo is the number one international spirits company. The region is experiencing rapid growth and premiumization with above average contribution to the Ajo's operating margins. Alvaro will speak more to this dynamic region later today. During the pandemic, consumption moved between channels towards the off-trade. We responded to this increased off-trade demand with focused commercial execution, upweighted marketing, and accelerated innovations which delivered strong results. In fiscal 21, we held or grew off-trade share in over 85% of our net sales in measured markets. Another consumer trend that has accelerated meaningfully during the pandemic is e-commerce. 
By increasing the visibility and ease of purchase for our brands online, we've driven strong performance with some of our largest e-commerce customers. Diageo is the number one in spirits retail sales on Amazon in Europe, the number one in spirits retail sales on Drizzly in the US, and in China, we've maintained our leadership in whiskey with a 26% share of whiskey retail sales on Tmall. In addition to building on our partnership with e-retailers and traditional trade channels, we're also developing our own e-commerce channels. In fiscal 21, we launched nine new sites, bringing the total to 28. In our measured markets, including China, the UK, and Germany, in fiscal 21, we grew our spirits e-commerce share by almost two percentage points. We're pleased with the strong start we made to fiscal 22 with growth momentum across all regions. We expect organic net sales to grow at least 16% in the first half of fiscal 22 and organic operating profit to grow ahead. Looking ahead to the next three years, we are confident in our ability to deliver our new medium-term guidance of consistent 5% to 7% organic net sales growth and sustainable organic operating profit growth ahead of net sales within a range of 6% to 9%. Lavenir will discuss our guidance for both the first half of fiscal 22 and the medium term in more detail during her presentation later today. Our strategy remains the right one, and it has mobilized our people. We are determined to use our superior capabilities to outperform the market and deliver a 50% increase in the Argeo's TBA share by 2030. As I mentioned earlier, we are confident in the position the company is in today. We are the number one international spirits player and spirits is rapidly premiumizing and gaining value share of total beverage alcohol. We have an advantage portfolio with extraordinary brands across price segments, categories, and geographies. We actively shape our portfolio towards higher growth opportunities and build highly successful brands. We have leading market positions with exposure to attractive current and future growth opportunities. We're building on our strong track record of ESG in pioneering grain-to-glass sustainability with our 10-year action plan, Society 2030 Spirit of Progress. The passion our people have for our brands and their engagement with our purpose creates an ownership mentality fueling better execution. I am very excited and optimistic about our ability to drive long-term sustainable growth. We continue to do business the right way for the long term. First, we invest in hiring and developing the most talented people, creating a culture where we execute with discipline and urgency while doing business the right way. Second, our commitment to having a positive impact on society is firm. We continue to promote moderation and tackle alcohol misuse, we lead on carbon emissions and water use, and we support the communities where we live, work, source, and sell. Finally, our focus is not just on delivering this year's results, but on building a truly sustainable business for the very long term. We're making investment decisions today that will take decades to play out, including reopening ghost distilleries and building new ones across the globe in a way which supports our sustainability and environmental goals. These long-term decisions will ensure many more of our brands enjoy 200-year anniversaries as Johnny Walker did in 2020. Building on the rich cultural heritage of outstanding distinctive brands and weaving it into the fabric of a local culture is paramount to what we do. That means understanding key moments in people's lives, 
and the meaningful role our brands can play in those moments, and connecting with consumers in unforgettable ways. Now let me show you how we deliver a global icon with a local heartbeat. Although the design you will see today is still work in progress, I couldn't be more excited about how far we have progressed. We start here at the railroad tracks, a nod to the fact that Guinness first made its way to Chicago from New York via train. And of course, the Black Gate is a tribute to the brand's home in Ireland. And around the corner, we are permanently turning over one of our walls to the city's celebrated local streets artists. As we enter the building through the contemporary door, we reveal a magnificent view of the brewery, where our world-class brewers will be making local beer that Chicagoans will love. As we turn to our right, we enter the first ever Guinness Bakery, an homage to our Baltimore bread baking during the pandemic. When guests enter what we proudly call our cathedral, with a center bar that boldly showcases a symbolic Guinness harp above. And here, on this wall, is one more very special art feature. As day transforms to night, these simple pegs will cast shadow reflecting the names of the 77 Chicago neighborhoods that we will proudly serve. Now, when I think of what we've accomplished, I am most proud of our ability to continue to balance driving long-term sustainable growth while also supporting our people and our customers, as well as making progress on delivering a positive social impact for generations to come. And as stakeholders, you should feel confident that we understand the balance. We have created significant value for all of our stakeholders, and we remain committed to doing so as we look to the future. We will continue to evolve, to stay relevant. Innovation and agility are now core competencies at the RGO. We are executing our strategic priorities and running the business for the long term each and every day. I am excited and confident about the Arjo's future because of the incredible talent of our people, our unrivaled category and geographic footprint, and our proven ability to build fantastic brands for the long term. I believe the best is yet to come.